surrender everything unto you. I surrender. You mean everything to us. I want to know. worship team. Thank you, everyone. It is for my subject this morning, winning souls. As a church, you know that in the next three years, we target to have 100 soul winners who win 100 souls each. 100 soul winners who will win 100 souls each. And on the other side of the coin, we also target to have 100 billionaires in the next three years. That is the B class and the E class, the billionaires and the soul winners. And you're allowed to be in both. Okay? You're allowed to be in both. Soul winning. When we began to, talk, to look at soul winning, we looked at the scripture in John chapter 21, which we are not going to read right now, uh, verses 15 to 17. When Jesus is asking Peter... Peter, do you love me? And whenever he answered in the affirmative, whenever he said, yes, Lord, you know I love you, he emphasized, emphasized his assignment. The assignments of God are so dependent on how much you love God. The assignments of God are not easy. We had a wedding yesterday. There's a function that is happening today. Someone was at the wedding yesterday, showed up this morning, has gone for another function, uh, probably will come back in the evening for men's fellowship. It depends on love. So Jesus is asking you again, do you love me? Turn to your neighbor and say, on behalf of Jesus, I want to ask you, do you love Jesus? Ask your neighbor, do you love Jesus? Ask the other neighbor, do you still love Jesus? Do you still love Jesus? Many years ago, I bought a car. It was a white Cresta, was it? Yes, it was a Cresta. Pastor Henry still remembers the number plates. And that Cresta... At that time, was a very nice car. And someone told me, came and said, ha, ah, or in a Benzie Japani. To, to him, he said, you have the Japanese Benz. It had a, a very good air conditioning. Within one minute, you felt like you were in a refrigerator. And people would ask you to turn it a little bit down. People liked the car. I bought a sticker. And I, I put on a, a bumper sticker and said, I prayed to God and got this in return. And so people would honk, and they would say, teach me how to pray. Because it was saying, I prayed to God, and I got this in return. Now, I went and parked that at the market. Normally here, we say that men are stronger than ladies, so in your home, you do the hard work. Say amen. 
So I told my wife, I think I am stronger lifting matoke and things like that. So I'm the one who went to the market. Plus our buddies, I mean the people that I was with. So we would go to the market. So I parked this car in the market. And there is this lady. We were in the same fellowship. Students fellowship. So I find a lady standing behind my car. And she looks at me and says, Bernard. Looking at my car and looking at me, her only question was, so you still love Jesus like you used to? You still love Jesus like you used to? Do you still love Jesus? Can someone look at you and recognize you and remember your college days, remember your university days, and can you say, you still like Love Jesus like you used to. I still love Jesus, and you still love Jesus. And if you don't, revive yourself in the love of God. God wants us to win souls. Jesus came. Jesus died. Jesus resurrected. The reason he gave up his life is for people to be saved. Amen? So the reason that Jesus gave up his life is for people to be Saved. Jesus loves people. Jesus loves people to get saved. Turn with me to your Bibles in the book of Mark chapter 16. We are going to read from verse 15 all the way to verse 20. Mark chapter 15. Okay. Okay. And he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Go, he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Verse 16. He who believes and is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. By reaching out, you're saving people from condemnation. Verse 17. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Verse 18. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly... It will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Verse 19. So then after the the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Verse 20. And they went out and preached everywhere. The Lord working with them and confirming them, confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Amen. In this church, we believe in Bible college. We believe in going to learn theology. Theology is theos is God. Ology is the study of. We believe in studying the Bible, because the Bible is not as literal as you look at it. How many of you know a proverb? You know at least one proverb, even if it's in your language. Most proverbs are figurative, correct? Most proverbs are figurative. When you're reading the Bible, there is figures of speech. I am at at Northwestern Christian University, both as a senior lecturer and as as a student. Chances are that I'll be graduating in December. Two of our pastors are at the same university. 
two of our members are threatening to be at the same university to study the Word of God and understand it. In the Word of God, there is poetry. And when you're in poetry, you know that you're creating figures of speech. In poetry, someone can say, you are as beautiful as the rising sun. It doesn't mean they get you and throw you into the sun and you rise. It's a figure of speech. So even when we read verse 18 here, there are some figures of speech. However, let's look at a video for about maybe five minutes and see some people that took this literally. Some people are lost and are lost within the Bible. Let's have a look at that. Just weeks ago, Mac Wolford, a renowned Pentecostal serpent handler, died after suffering a bite from one of the snakes that he used to show his devotion to God. Wolford's death sent shockwaves through the Appalachian congregations committed to carrying on this practice. The faithful continue to handle venomous snakes on a regular basis. Gary Tuckman reports. This church in the heart of Appalachia is completely quiet just before the service begins, except for the creature inside this locked box. It's a rattlesnake, and it's rattling. It's one of seven deadly snakes, about to be used in a wild ceremony in God's name. This is Pastor Andrew Hamblin. He's a 21-year-old serpent-handling pastor at the Tabernacle Church of God in La Follette, Tennessee. He, his wife, and the rest of this congregation practice Christianity much differently than almost all other Christians, using venomous snakes as part of their service. Why? They point to the New Testament, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 18. It's stated in part, they shall take up serpents. Believers like Pastor Hamblin say when God anoints them, they have an obligation to do this, and that God will protect them. And even if they are bitten, their belief is God will heal them. No doctors necessary. If it looks dangerous, that's because it is. It's also illegal in the state of Tennessee. But that only strengthens the pastor's conviction. Snake handling in churches is a tradition in decline, but Hamblin wants that to change. It's against the law to have snakes in a church in Tennessee. Right. Does that concern you? No, sir, it don't. Now, if someone was to get bit and die, I know the authorities would come in on us and probably shut us down. But that's why I stress so much to my people to, you know, make sure. But now, if it's their appointed time to die, there's nothing I can do to prevent it. This is not a con game. These snakes are poisonous. They can't kill. And they do kill. Just a few weeks ago, the pastor of this church in the remote West Virginia town of Matoka was bitten by one of his rattlesnakes during a service. Pastor Mac Walford initially refused medical care, but as he got seriously ill, he gave his permission to go to a hospital. But it was too late. He died the same day. That we have to have the right doctrine. This scripture does not mean picking up snakes literally. And I know that as you preach the gospel, you're going to encounter some people that will tell you, okay, here is a verse. Those that do not believe in the Bible are not the ones to interpret the Bible for you. Okay? It is not scriptural for you to go and order for a cup of poison and drink poison. Let us look at this. Matthew chapter 3 verse 7. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. Let us explain the things in Jesus' day and what Jesus meant. Matthew chapter 3, verse 7. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming to his baptism, he said to them, let us read together. What did he say to them? Broods of Vipers, who warned you to flee the wrath to come? People, the Pharisees and the Sadducees came to be baptized. And to John the Baptist, he looked at children of vipers 
running away from the wrath of God, coming to God to be baptized. So when the Bible is talking about vipers picking up serpents, does not mean going to the forest and finding a python, a cobra, or any other. You know, when the cobra raises its head and you say, I'm coming to pick you. The Bible is talking about those that are destined for the destruction, those that are teaching falsely, those that are opposed to the gospel, those that are opposed to the kingdom of God. You are going to encounter them as you go soul winning. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. Revelations 12, 9. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels we are cast out with him. So the old serpent, the greatest of serpents, the oldest of serpents was cast out. That great serpent was cast out. The devil is the chief serpent. So when the Bible says you pick up serpents, it means you confront the devil. You go head zone with a witch doctor. We had a crusade in Pata on the islands in 1990. Before some of you were born. And our pulpits used to be, you know, this cheapest timber, Chirundu. One evening, as we were lying in our tent, the tent was built with banana leaves throughout. One of the people on the praise team came and said, everyone who steps on the pul pulpit gets a migraine headache. I was with Pastor Andrew, Namutegere. Pastor Andrew says, there must be witchcraft under the pulpit. Check. But whoever did it will show up here before we are done for that day. He was just lying and chilling and saying these words. They went under the pulpit. And sure enough, there was witchcraft. Some grass, a tete, tied and put in human what? Waste. They got a hole, dug it out. No one got a migraine again. As we were concluding the crusade, we saw someone coming. I won't tell you which religion they were. But a lady was coming, Bazak, waving her hands. And another lady chased her to grab her, take her back home. Once she touched her, she also went Bazak. Then a man chased them. And the man also joined. And they came to the crusade behind the crusade ground shouting, we are the ones, we are the ones that bewitched you. We are the ones, we are the ones that bewitched you. They were prayed for. The first lady got saved. The second lady refused. The man refused. This man was a witch doctor and a catechist as well. He had two wives and these were the two wives. And they had come to bewitch the crusade. And this is exactly what Jesus is saying. That no power of witchcraft will be able to handle you. You are going to dislodge witch doctors. When you go out in the name of Jesus, no witch doctor can stand your way. We have to go soul winning. 
And the Bible is telling you ahead of time, no witchcraft, no mayembe, nothing will be able to come against you. The product of witchcraft, actually witchcraft itself, but the product of evil people, the product of satanic people is the poison. The poison that is being talked about here is what the evil people want to do to you. The serpents are the evil people. He says when you go out in the name of Jesus, you will be able to handle serpents. You will be able to handle any power of witchcraft and any witch doctor. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. Where you're seated, I want you to do like this. The Bible is saying that when you go out in the name of Jesus, you go out to win souls. He gives you authority to trample over even the chief of the witch doctors. We went to preach in, uh, we went for a crusade in uh, Rushere, Kazo. I had told them to book for us the best hotel. When I got there, they had booked us in a dilapidated hotel. We spent there one night. The windows could hold because they had put a brick outside. The following night, I went and found the best hotel. And on the second night, the driver, our driver sleeps in the car. Doesn't want to spend your money because he's hired. He wants to move the car out of strong light so that he can sleep. And all of a sudden, something in the car bursts. And the belts fly off. And he comes running to me. It was a cat. When he goes back to sleep, he gets, a, someone tells him in a dream, call the traffic police. You did not kill a cat, you killed a person. He comes back to my room running. And I told him, go and sleep. I've already called the police. Because by then I had called the people who were with. Who are we with in Rushere? I remember Peter Suna was there, Benja was there. I had already called them and said, we need some prayer here in the morning. Some witch doctor must have messed up with our car. Come and lay hands. I told them to bring the, that van, that van out there to take the guests in the meantime as we fix that. So in the morning, the driver is waiting for traffic officers. I mobilized the entire team. We laid hands on the car and we prayed. When I called the, 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 the overseer of the National Fellowship in the district of uh, Kiruhura, he told me, that's why I didn't take you there in the first case. The immediate door neighbor is the head of all Bachwezi in this place. We slept in that hotel, just fixed the car, and slept there. And I, I say, that is his house? I would stretch my hands. Because the Bible is saying, even when they send witchcraft in the form of whatever, it will not stand. Poor cat, we killed it. And poor them, they said it was a, a person, not a cat. So you understand what that means. Whatever witchcraft it was, you see, I'm sorry for those of, us, of you viewing us uh, wherever you are. Uh, witchcraft is in local languages. We can't translate it in any other language. Even if you're listening from Nigeria, also your, your witchcraft there is in your local language. So 
I will say this in our local language. Usangali ali jembe bambi ne tulita. What is a jembe in English? We had a debate with an imam who said, you see, you locally believe in my embe. The Bible says the horn. I said, excuse me, you need to go to school. Now, look at this. Whatever form of witchcraft, the Bible is saying, when you determine to follow Christ and determine to preach the gospel, you'll go to a witch doctor and preach to them, and nothing will happen to you. That guy that we preached us in, in Impata, I went to his yard. Unfortunately, it's the only day I forgot to go with a matchbox. Because for us, when we used to do door to door, we would go with matchboxes to burn down any witchcraft available for burning. So when we stood in his compound, people began to gather. The neighbors began to gather and look at us. I didn't know he was a witch doctor. So later he says, he has my embe. And he points to a very small shrine. It was roofed with this kind of thing when it's dry. It was so tiny, that high. He said, if you're men of God, and you think your God is powerful, go and burn it. I rushed to his kitchen, outdoor kitchen, picked a, a piece of wood with fire. I was doing like this, fanning it up. He said, stop! Move Stop! And he chased us away. But the people followed us. They said, no one has ever gone there against the witch doctor's will that did not fall dead in his compound. The fact that I'm still here. No power will pick those witch doctors up and destroy the witchcraft in the name of Jesus. We are going to have big crusades. Each time we have a crusade out there, that entire week, because of the praise and worship that is lifted, all the witch doctors in the area where they hear the voice do not work. No demon shows up. Today I want you to understand that God has called you. And is saying, and all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means at you. This is the poison being referred to in the first scripture. These are the serpents being referred to in the first scripture. God is saying, go and win souls. Poison is the abilities of the devil to destroy you. We have snakes on the internet. They entice you to traffic you. They entice you to rape you. They entice you to steal from you. They entice you to make you join bad company. But the Bible is saying it will by no means hurt you. We are going to win even the internet thieves to Christ in the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 16 again, verse 20, as we conclude. And they went out. Jesus said, go. And what did they do? Jesus said, go. And what did they do? They went out. And when they went out, what did they do? They went out and preached everywhere. Today, I want to tell you, go out and preach everywhere. Go out and preach everywhere. Go out and win at least a soul a week. Go out and preach to at least one person every day. Tell them of your testimony. Tell them of what God has done for you. Tell them of the power of God. Tell them of your experiences because we are witnesses. We tell them of the good things that God has done for our lives. They went because they were told to go. And the Lord working with them and confirming the word through accompanying signs. God working with them through accompanying signs. We have seen so many miracles because God accompanies his word with 
signs and wonders. Is there anyone here you would like to give your life to Jesus? You would like to be born again? You would like to get saved? Anyone that wants to give their lives to Jesus? Is there anyone that wants to be used by God? You want to be used by God. You want God to work with you. You want to see miracles, signs, and wonders in your life. You want to win souls. Let us get to our feet right now as we wait on God. If there's anyone sick, if you have anything to pray for, you're getting bad dreams, you're attacked by the devil in any way, I want you to come up front. If you're sick, if you want any special prayer, I want you to come up front right now. The rest of us, I want you to wait on God to fill you with power, to fill you with his anointing, that you begin to speak in tongues, that you, be, you continue to be used of God. There's nothing what more. Yeah.